inside the Veterans Dome Stadium Complex. It's the fastest, deadliest, and most ferocious sport on earth. Extreme Dodgeball. Welcome, I'm Bill Dwyer. That's right, you're not still wearing the same pair of tough skin corduroys you wore in fourth grade. Why would you play the same brand of dodgeball? We sure as heck don't. We play only the most extreme dodgeball. It's the second season of professional extreme dodgeball, and the place is in a frenzy. Sitting close enough to me to violate his restraining order is the magnetic Zach Selwyn. But I'm still wearing the same underwear I wore in first grade, Bill, and that's correct. After today, the regular season is no more. No mas. Vaya con Dios, season regular. The eight teams in the league have scratched and clawed to make it this far. They're split up into two divisions. The classic. The division leaders are the CPAs. They're six and three. Right behind them are Arm Response at five and four, and Inc. Incorporated also at five and four. Trapped in the cellar, the three and six Firebell Mafia. They're joined this year by the four new teams that make up the expansion division. There's a three-way tie for first in this division, and they all have records of five and four. Bling, Delta Force, and the Reef Shanks. In last place with a record of two and seven is mutually assured destruction. The three teams from each division that get out of today with the best records will go on to the postseason. It's a different kind of postseason, which is fitting because this is a different kind of dodgeball. It's five-on-five -five professional multi-ball split court extreme dodgeball. And whoever emerges victorious at the end of it all will be walking tall with 25 Gs. Keep your cell phones handy. You will have an opportunity to vote during the show for the player of the week. Go to gsn.com slash mobile for more information. Standard text messaging rates from your service provider up front. Enough legal mambo jambo. Let's get right to the action with our first featured match of the night. It's the five and four Delta Force versus the five and four Reef Sharks in a battle for expansion division supremacy. Let's go down to the floor for intros. All right, guys, let's get things started. They dodge more before 9 a.m. than most people dodge all day long. A lead green killing machine, Delta Force. Well, Delta Force, these guys have been up and down this country looking for enemies and remaining five and four victorious. They're led by my main man, Paul Green. 34 kills, five catches, six game winners. That's almost a triple double. Jeff Mead has five kills, two catches, and two regenerations, but he's an actor. He was on NYPD Blue. Bobby Rowe, the other big gun for this squad, 32 kills. Four catches. There's Lisa the Beach Shark Marshall. She's got eight kills, three catches, and two regenerations. And then, of course, my future ex-wife, Linda Overhue. Three kills, three catches. Watery generation. And not to worry, viewers, they will be taking off the camouflage jacket, so you will be able to see them. And the team they'll be facing tonight, let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the arena. Their boards may be long, but their tempers are very short. Please clear the beach. Here come the Reef Sharks. Way to go, Hamilton. Like the Reef Sharks are my favorite team. Mark Pontius is Don is a television repairman. He's got a monster set of tools. He's also got a monster 23 kills and 14 catches. Mark Long, speaking of rookies, 34 kills on the season, one of the league leaders. Chris Bullis over Broadway has 16 kills and seven catches. Amy Wiseman say, I got 15 kills and three catches. And of course, there's Melanie Thomas. One kill, two catches, one regeneration, one hot body. The Reef Sharks, will they allow Delta Force to storm the beach? Let's go down to the floor. Mary's got some insights. Well, Bill, both of these teams are 5-4, and four, and whoever wins this match will have the best record in the expansion division. It's Rambo and Roe versus Mark and Mark. All told, that's 123 kills. This should be a bloodbath. We'll wait and see. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mary. This is a huge match for Delta Force. They've beaten Bling both times they've played them this season. So with a win here, they'll clinch first place in the expansion, guaranteeing themselves that all-important five. 
A match in extreme dodgeball is the best of three games. Game is over and all five players on a team have been eliminated. Here's a more in-depth look at the rules. All right, first the bad news. You're out if you get hit by a ball, someone catches your throw, you step out of bounds or over the center line. The ball hits you and a teammate, you're both out. You can use the ball for defense, but if it gets knocked out of your hand by another ball, you're out. Here's the good news. The ball hits the floor of the wall, it's dead. Headshots do not count. Every time your team catches a ball, one of your out players gets to come back in the game. And remember, if your team has possession of more than one ball, the ref can call you on a five second delay of game warning. Keep it moving. If a team gets down to one player, that last man standing is gonna have 20 seconds to try and survive. If he makes the full 20, your whole team gets back in the game, but you can only use that once per game. That's it, have fun playing extreme dodgeball. No more talking, it's time to head down to the attack circle where the head referee, James Highway Burns and line reps, Greg James and Declan Galvin are about to begin the match. Let's go. Reef Sharks, are you ready? Yes! Delta Force, are you ready? Yes! Here we go, this is the opening rush into the red attack circle. Remember, players must exit the circle. Conius goes out. Great toss by Rowe. Rowe. Nice and low from the Rowe. Oh, big catch by Green, and now Long is out. Paul Green, great catch. Delta Force is full strength right now. Suddenly it's up to Bullis. Oh, and Wiseman, because Thomas. Thomas, did you make the catch? No. Didn't make the catch. Shut up, I'll give you a card. Cards are being threatened. Paul Green is threatening the existence of the Reef Shanks. Here's Bullis. Him and Wiseman are often side by side. Over Hugh. You know what Wiseman does too? She hustles on the court. Any ball that rebounds off that back wall on her side of the court, she's going after it. Was that a catch or a trap? Bullis making the catch the hard way between his knees. That's a catch. Pontius is back in. Rowe goes out. And Pontius comes in. Green with some nice dodging right there. Green and Marshall. Reef Sharks on a three-game winning streak. Three -game winning streak. <laughs> Paul Green, he goes down. He tried to go high with that dodge. Ball caught him in the foot. Wiseman, Bullis, and Pontius are a solid back three for this Reef Shack battalion. Yeah. Oh. Little bounce pass like he was in the lane with Pontius. What was that? Oh, oh man, he couldn't figure out what he wanted to do. Pontius kills him now. Marshall has 20 seconds. Five to get rid of one of those balls. Maybe should have left it over there and let her get the charge. Sure, she could have just rolled the other one off. Pontius just trying to take her off. Oh, great dodge in here. One last throw. He's not even going to attempt it because here it comes. And wait till the team comes oh, in. Lord. Can't take anybody down. Black Hawk down. They called for reinforcement and they all arrived. Can only use the 20-second rule once in a game. Oh, no, oh, still. Man. Temporarily knocked it out of his hands. He was able to grab it out of the air. He'll throw at Rowe. Nothing there. And Rowe right back at him. Takes it. Yes. Bullis. Wiseman needs to stay alive. She does not have a ball. Wiseman. Right the bread basket. She goes down. First game of the match to Delta Force. No ball, no chance. Very strong is down on the floor talking to Bobby Rowe. All right, Zach, thanks. Bobby, you look like you got a personal vendetta to pick over there with Mark Long. Uh, well, we're head-to-head -head probably in kill count, so I'm going to make sure I take him down. This is the last game of the season. We're going to get the win, and I'm going to get the championship in kills. All right, you got three kills. Let's see what you can add to that. All right, back up to you guys. Thanks, Mary. And remember, the league leader in kills gets the annual red tie worn by Bill Dwyer as a gift. Yeah, there's only one of these, too. Time for game two. It's sudden death for the Reef Sharks. The big ball's in effect. Is it me, Zach, or does that ball just seem to be getting bigger? Either that or you're getting smaller, Bill. Many a player has used the big ball to take out an opponent. The big ball, it's not just for blocking anymore. Let's go courtside, starting game two. Reef Sharks, are you ready? Delta Force, are you ready? Here we go, the opening rush. Very important. Both throwing balls go to Reef Sharks. Great dodge by Paul Green. 
Good hustle by Linda over here to pick up that ball for the Delta Force. Oh, ball green. Pontius always seems to go out early. He goes for the catch early, and he seems to exit a lot of games before the rest of his team. However, he's got some good catches on this team. Bullis. Bullis knows it. He's not going to be complaining about that one. Suddenly, it's down to Long and Wiseman. Mark Long. Oh, that was an easy take out of Jeff. Tall Mead. Paul Green with his league leading 37th kill. The unstoppable Green. Tough to the ladies of the Sharks. Female Sharks, remember, have no reproductive organs. Oh, that's it. Uh oh, 20 seconds. Stay in there. He got it. Made a skip. Rowe throws the ball low and hits Thomas in the foot. That's his 37th kill of the season, too. A quick 2 0 match victory for Delta Force. Mary, she's got a few kills. Let's go down to her. You are now the division leader. That's a huge deal. You are gunning for that 25,000. Yes, we are. We needed that buy. Everybody can rest up now, have a party, have a good time, sleep in. Give me a little insight. It's getting pretty heated out here, we've noticed. Uh, you know what? It's just winner take all right now. With everybody throwing everything they got, we're going to do what we can. I guarantee you, we will have the money when it's all over. All right. Bill, Zach, back up to you. Match one is in the books. And with that win, Delta Force clinches first place in the expansion division and the all-important five. Coming up, highlights of an expansion division rumble between mutually assured destruction and bling. Later on, hard response takes on Barbell Mafia and the certified public assassins take on Inc. Incorporated. Two epic battles not to be missed. It's going to determine classic division champion. Go-getters, welcome back to Extreme Dodgeball. Time to check in on action that happened earlier in the league. When the two and seven mutually assured destruction took on the five and four Bling. Here's what Bling's Adam Olberg had to say before their match with MAD. We're a little worried about being complacent. We're, we're, um, we're just taking it one game at a time though because it is still, everybody is still close in the division. I just feel like anybody can beat anybody in any match, you know? So that's why we don't want to look ahead and we know they're a strong team, despite what anybody's record says, it's still, it's everybody's got a good team. Here's the rest of the bling. The kill leader, Fritz Oli, he's got 32. The crazy chinchilla, Hershey has 11. Pimpin' Parlor has thrown down seven. Alvina Carroll has four catches. Let's find out about their opponents. Mutually assured destruction. They're led by Spaz Davis, he's got 20 kills. Cathcart and Van Norton each have 13 kills. Marie Philman and Anna Barge are great assets to this team. They've chalked up a combined 17 kills and 31 catches. Let's take a look at what happened. In game one, Adam Olberg started off with an unlikely suicide kill on Spaz Davis while his team was still full force. Rizzoli and Hershey followed up with a simul throw and simul kill, leaving Marie Philman as MAD's last man standing with 20 seconds to stay alive. Dodging Mia Parlor's suicide throw to regenerate her team. Now, it was Mad's turn. After Frank Rizzoli went over the line, and Anna Barch caught Portis Hershey. This throw from Tyrone Cathcart sent Alvina Carroll out, winning the game for MAD. Game two started out like the first as Olberg sent Spaz Davis out on a catch. Hershey hit Cathcart. Carroll caught Van Norton. And Olberg nailed Anna Barch. Again, leaving Marie Philman to last 20 seconds. Which she did, regenerating MAD. But Olberg said, sit down! Sending Cathcart, Van Norton, and Barch right back to the bench. The big Tortellini finally took down Philman, leaving it open for Olberg to knock out Spaz, winning the game for Blink, tying up the match at one game apiece. Game three was Dead Man Walking, where the orange headband was worn by Spaz Davis for MAD and Alvina Carroll for Blank. Blank started picking off the scientists again when Olberg hit Van Norton and Hershey hit Philman. But then, Tyrone Cathcart turned the tables, catching a pop-up ball, sending the deadly Olberg out. Cathcart and Philman had a simul kill on Alvina Carroll's protectors, leaving the dead man alone to try and regenerate her team. Which she did. But after Philman took out Frizzoli 
MAD turned up the heat on the Bunsen burners. Deadman Davis made an amazing catch when Hershey's ball bounced off Anna Barge. A launch and a dive. Then, Philbin took out Olberg on a throw, and Parler with the catch once again, leaving Deadman Carroll alone for bling, but now, no regeneration chance. The mighty Marie Philbin took aim, and with this throw, hit Alvita Carroll on the ankle. Victory, MAD. Unfortunately for the mad scientists, this would only bring them up to three and seven, leaving them in last place in the expansion division and ending their season right there. Happy trails. We're gonna take a quick break and come right back to more Extreme Dodgeball. Coming up, a classic division showdown between Barbell Mafia and Armed Response. And later, learn a little more about one of Extreme Dodgeball's most animated players, Tyrone Rush. Welcome back to Extreme Dodgeball. Now the match is on deck. Let's check it out right now. It's a classic division matchup. It's a three and six Barbell Mafia trying to derail the five and four armed response. Uh, we're on top of the world right now. The confidence is really high, but we can't look too far ahead. We know we have a, other good teams. We have to, we can't look past anybody, even Barbell Mafia. We can't look ahead to the jackpot. You know, every single game is big right now. Let's take a look at armed response. The animal has 32 kills on the season. David Rice is second with 19. The ladies have three kills and nine catches between them. And Dano Kingman, who's filling in for the still injured Kel Watrin, has four kills and one catch in two matches. They're getting ready. Let's meet their opponents. The Barbell Mafia basically consists of Tyrone Rush. He's got 31 kills and 11 catches. Alan Grimes is sort of pulling his own massive weight. He's got 13 kills. Jeremy Freeman's the captain. He's got six kills and four catches. And the women on this team can finish the season with an unlikely distinction of having zero kills and zero catches. Impressive. Down to the floor, referee Jim Burns gonna get this party started. On response, are you ready? Barbell Mafia, are you ready? Here's the opening rush. Arm response, Barbell Mafia, they split the balls. Nice move by Rush, fakes out Benedetto and takes out Rice. Benedetto, down goes Grimes. Mountain and Rush. Wow, nice little scarecrow dodge there by David the Animal Benedetto. Rush takes out Zingali. Zingali goes out. Big kill for Rush. They turned her back on the dodge. Very important game for both these teams. Must win for Barbell Mafia. I don't think a team with seven losses is going to make the playoffs. Go, fellas. Here comes Rush. Save that. Benedetto. Rush's ball bounces off Benedetto, but the animal reels it in. Absolutely gorgeous. The best thing about Benedetto is his catching ability. Not only can he pull it in, he can make it look good. There goes Coates. It's up to the mountain. David Rice back in the game. Spin move, Benedetto. Benedetto. Comes Rice, he wants to throw. Nothing happens. Ooh, Mountain Freeman's throw hits Rice just below the chin. First drop. Rice is out. Hit him in the chest. Kingman's catch sends Altman out, but Fenderbosch can't make the catch. Mountain has another kill. Mountain Freeman's got 20 seconds to regenerate. He can Victory on response, and Dano Kingman proving a worthy substitute for the injured. Kel Watford. Dano Kingman, he stepped in and he's crowned himself a worthy substitute. So our response takes game one, despite the best efforts of Tyrone Rush. While there's a break in the action, let's learn a little more about the man who likes to call himself the Rush Factor. In this segment, we like to call the Beyond the Ball Factor. Hi. I work at the San Gabriel Children's Center. I work with emotion disturbed kids. You know, I always tell them, hey, you remind me of myself. My upbringing from my childhood was very rough, and sports was my way out. It taught me character, it taught me to be responsible. One thing you guys gotta realize, to be a complete player, 
You gotta be good on the field, staying focused, and you gotta stay focused off the field. I'm just like these kids, but I'm on the other side now. I'm helping them when somebody was helping me in my childhood. If you get people to see how great an athlete you are, and you try hard in the classroom, people will start wanting to help you. And they won't only see you as a football player, they'll start seeing you as a little young individual that's trying to make it in this world. Only thing you need is a little help. I have a very beautiful wife, very beautiful daughter, and it even makes it better when I go to work now because I have one of my own. And that's something that I live for. Every day I wake up, I thank God for giving me this blessing. And with that, let's take a short commercial break. We'll be right back with more Extreme Dodgeball. And Tyrone Rushley, the Mafia to a comeback. Coming up, game two of this exciting match. Later, CPA tries to recapture the Classic Division crown when they battle Inc. Incorporated. Don't go. Welcome back to Extreme Dodgeball. In game one of this best of three match, the Renicops David Benedetto and super sub Dano Kingman. Too much for the oversized but underwhelming Barbell Mafia. Game one goes to armed response. Now we're ready for game two, which as always, will feature the spherical majesty of the big ball. Armed response, are you ready? Barbell Mafia, are you ready? Benedetto, got her feet, takes out Altman. Rice Grimes with the catch of the big ball. Rice goes out, ill-advised throw. Benedetto wants blood and gets it. Coates goes down. Zingale, chalk up another kill for the little one. Play. <laughs> Great deflection into the crowd. But look at that strategy. Roll the big ball towards the animal and then throw both little balls towards it. Hey, foot first. Out. Get your feet. Go. Burns. Benedetto. Rush's ball hit Benedetto on the foot. The animal is caged. Zingali steps out. Rush. Keeping these guys in it. Larry Kingman. Wow. Kingman, great catch. Kingman. Rice comes in. What a feeling. Out. We're going to see Kingman a lot in the playoffs. He's warming up. He's had a couple games under his belt, and he's really starting to show his stuff now. Rush is gone. Oh, Rice lost that one out of his hand. He lost the handle. Rice is on the backup. Oh, that was a good throw by Rice. Couple seconds. Oh, they can't do it. Rice goes out. Almost had the game there. Suicide kill. Oh, oh I thought it caught him. Here comes the barbell mafia. The weights are all back in. Harry Jen. We got five seconds to throw a ball. Kingman and Fender box. Get one great of those job there. Kingman, nice great dodging. dodging. Five, Get him a ball. Four, There's the distraction move. Nice block by Kingman. Grimes goes out. Big one. Five, Dano, great toss there by Kingman. Dano, Billy Jean Kingman. Five, uh, kudos four, to you. Rush You're goes out. Rush, almost a yellow there for yeah, everybody taking their time, out. leaving the court. Oh, Freeman, what was that? Freeman threw her a little pop fly. Weak toss by Freeman. There she goes. That means Coast is the last man standing. No regeneration possible. You can't kick it. She almost kicked it. She got the big ball. Alyssa Coast. This is it now, high and low if they can. Yeah. That's it, they took Coach down. Rice's ball catches her on the leg. Armed response, taking the match. 
two games to nothing. And that is a big win for Armed Response. If the CPAs lose their upcoming match, that means Armed Response will clinch the division championship and the first round bye. Seven losses for Barbell Mafia after being in the championship game last season. You think this league hasn't improved? Insightful Zach got to say goodbye to Barbell Mafia. There's more extreme dodgeball coming up after this commercial break. Stay tuned. There is more dodgeball coming up, but not for Barbell Mafia. Their season is over. Coming up, can the CPAs beat Inc. Incorporated and finish atop the Classic Division? Welcome back to Extreme Dodgeball. More action coming your way right now. It's the defending champion CPAs versus their Classic Division rivals, Inc. Incorporated. Let's go down to the floor for team introductions. All right, thanks, guys. Off the court, they'll save you millions. On the court, they'll make you pay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the CPA! Well, the CPA is what can be said about the defending champs. Six and three, they're coming through the smoke. Michael Costanza leads his team with 33 kills and four catches. Tobias is sniper McKinney. Maybe not having the sophomore season some expected. He's still got 21 kills and five catches. Art Spiegel, the artful dodger, 20 kills, eight regeneration. Mandy Summers has turned it up with nine catches. And Natasha Pospichova, the former tennis player. Maybe she should go back to the green court. She's only got one kill. Kind of a disappointing season for the CPAs, especially after how they just drove and powered their way through the league. Let's see who they're gonna be facing. Well, guys, they've got holes in their ears, noses, and lips, and they're looking to tear their opponents a new one. Make some noise, extra loud for Ink Incorporated! Yes. Well, Ink Incorporated, talk about a breakthrough year. Sean Hitman Hauser has really turned it up. He's got 16 kills and six catches. The captain remains the wild, hairy zebra, the evil robot, Ben Psycho, Toad Decay. 15 kills, 7 catches. Stradi Hovardes has 25 kills and 5 grabs. Scary Carrie Richardson. She's the dead girl. 1 kill and 3 catches. Then of course there's Slim Kim. We missed the pink shorts Estrada. 4 kills, 6 catches, and 2 regenerations. Mary's down on the floor in the midst of all this. It's exciting. Mary, what's up? Indeed it is. In the last match, Art Spiegel, he had two catches, two regenerations, and two game-winning kills. Inc. Incorporated is number two in the Classic Division, but they're improving every game. When the competition is this close, every player needs to step it up. I guess 25 grand is a pretty good motivator. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Merrick. Let's get down to business. Let's head down to the court. Ref is set to begin game one of this match. Incorporated, are you ready? CPA, are you ready? Here we go, big game for both these teams. Five and four, Inc. Inc. CPAs are six and three. Both balls go to the incorporated ones. Both these teams in the league last year. Big catch by Costanza. Hauser goes out. Costanza's got an ability to catch while in the air. Not many players possess that. Roddy just jumping over those things. Oh, they can't take down Costanza, though they try. Big toss by Toad. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, there he goes. He goes. He goes after McKinney, and he's out. Burns gotcha. says someone's out. Looks like Carrie six Richardson, feet, six feet under. Eagle Eye Burns says McKinney hit Richardson on the foot. Great yeah. right catch by Ben Toad. Spiegel goes to the sideline. Oh, able to catch Spiegel's ball between his knees. Toth, he's not letting off. Look at that dodge oh. by Costanza. Beautiful. Up against the wall. Unfortunately for him, the wall is out of bounds. He's out whether he was hit or not. Uh-oh. Costanza's throwing up the bird. Guess what? He pulls the lemon on Costanza. Not the most even-tempered player. He's sort of the Rasheed Wallace of extreme dodgeball. Karate and Toth with the simul throw. And Summers can't hang on to that one. Last man standing here for CPAs is Pospich. Suicide kill from Strike. Nothing there. 
He's out. Nine seconds left. Here's Tote. That knee is there. Has he got it? Hands. I have a feeling Posmich could have probably just let that ball go and hit the wall. Instead, she tried to deflect it. It knocked it out of her little mitts. And CPAs go down the first game, 0-1 to engage. Fingertip push-up time for Posmich. She needs to strengthen those paws. Mary's down on the floor. She's got some strong claws. Mary. All right, thanks, guys. Spiegel, this is a very important match for you guys. Yeah, it's really important. We really need to get that by. We need this win to move into the playoffs in a comfortable place. What are you going to do this game to win this game? I'm going to support my team, keep us focused one ball at a time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah indeed, Mary. Truly, long after we're gone, they'll still be playing extreme dodgeball. They sure will, but the big thing right now is Michael Costanza has one yellow card. One more, they lose him for the match. Can't afford that. Coming up, the thrilling finale of this hard-fought contest. Welcome back to Extreme Dodgeball. Game one of this best of three showdown. With playoff positioning on the line. Handsome Costanza and his geek squad could not outmaneuver the tattooed bullies of Ink Incorporated. That is a big win for Ink Incorporated. Another big thing, the big ball. It's time for game two. Let's go courtside. Incorporated, are you ready? CPA, are you ready? Here we go, opening rush, game two, very important. Oh, Whoa, yeah. Ovardis, great dodge. Open shot on Ovardis, Costanza could not connect. Costanza, very smart, up in the air, pulls his hands back to not get hit. Oh, he's really got to watch his temper this match, Bill, with one yellow card against him after throwing a weird number one sign, but using the wrong finger to referee Greg James. Costanza almost gets hit by the big ball. Catch. Costanza goes down. The numbers might not show it, but Ben Psycho Toth is still the leader of this Inc. Incorporated squad. Oh, yeah. McKinney. Oh, McKinney. Another thing McKinney did a lot better last season was pull in those fastballs. Not having a good year catching. Oh, but and there's the catcher. Is. She's bringing it back, showing her old form. Spiegel hurls the big ball. Here come the CPAs with a simul throw. They hit ball. But Estrada steps out of bounds on the dodge. Ref sender package. Strati, Hauser, and Carey. Oh! Costanza drops the ball. He's going for the attack. Why did Costanza give the ball over to Inc. Incorporated? Does he really give it to Costanza? Hospitch. She's going down to the bench. Now it's up to Spiegel and Summers. Yes! Summers, big catch on the big ball. All too familiar. Good to see her catch it again. Bad idea by Hovardes. Let's see if McKinney can bring it back. They go after Hauser. They can't get him. Gary Richardson doesn't know to go after those balls that are coming off the wall. There's Hauser showing some hustle. Mary does the old walk, suicide walk to open up Hauser for the 20-second countdown. They want to get back on. They want the whole team back. The suicide walk. Nicely called. Interesting strategy. Oh, great deflection by Hauser. One second left, and guess what? The sleeves are back. They're back. Ink, ink. The tattooed love kids. Do they know tattoos are permanent? Look at out again. Can't quite find his groove this season. Looks like he can't decide whether he wants to dodge or catch. And how many times have we seen Summers and Spiegel, the last two remaining for CPA? Toth with a throw. Spiegel with a deflection. Secret weapon for this squad, absolutely. He's picked up where McKinney and Costanza have really slacked off. 
Oh, and both go out, both out. But it's all up to Sunshine Summers, who has 18 seconds now to regenerate her team. Got to use the ball to protect herself. Got to get rid of a couple of balls here. There we go. There we go. They got to go at her. She's in the corner, not the smartest place to be suicide attempt by Toad. Nothing. Not there. Guess what? CPAs. CPAs back out on the floor, full strength. Here's the problem. Two big guns for Ink Ink down the sideline. There we go. Strata gets rid of it. Great catch by Hauser. Huge. And a good dodge there. Takes out Summers. John Hauser with the dodgeball hat trick. Makes the catch. Makes a great dodge. And then the kill shot on Mandy Summers. Up to McKinney and Spiegel now. They got all three balls on the CPA side. Five seconds to throw. They tried to take him out. He dodged it. Looked like it That's it. Kerry Richardson not paying attention. You've got to keep your eye on the whole court. Spiegel and McKinney now with both balls for the CPAs. I don't know how Art Spiegel does it, but he does not go out easily or often. Oh, look at Strati. Strati, he's not scared. That got Strati. Oh. Big play by McKinney. Huge. McKinney with the throw and the catch. Strati's out. Now watch them use the big ball as a distraction. McKinney throwing high. And it worked. Hauser goes down. And it's Strata oh. in the dome. Caught her in the head. To me. Caught her in the head. The big ball caught her in the head. Nope. Greg James is saying it hit her hand and then hit her head. Caught her in the hands first, then it went to her head. Well, no matter what it caught, it couldn't have felt good for Estrada to take that big ball in the chest. CPA is even it up at one game apiece. Teams have split the first two games. That means it's time for game three, and that means each team has to choose their dead man walking. Let's head down. Dead man to the middle, let's go. In this game, both teams select the dead man walking. If the team's dead man is eliminated in any way, that team instantly loses the match. Dead men for this game, going to be Art Spiegel for CPAs, Ben Psycho Toad for Ink Inc. Incorporated, are you ready? CPA, are you ready? Here's the opening rush. Oh. Ink Inc. sends their two big guns. This game could rely on Sean Hauser. He's taking a big gun out by making Ben Tote the dead man walking. There goes Hobartis. He's out. Huge kill. Both of them got him. Costanza McKinney, the simul kill. Takes out Costanza. Big That's kill. big. Big kill for Hauser. A lot more even now. Richardson playing the line. Playing the good ball, girl. Can she take advantage? They don't think she's gonna throw it. Can she take advantage? Oh, Summers. Mandy Summers. There she is. Hauser goes out. CPA full squad. Remember though, it's all about the dead man walking. It's time for Toad to step up. Yeah, he's the dead man walking. But they need to have someone to throw the ball. There goes Estrada, now it's up to Richardson and Toad. Ink Ink not playing like this is the rubber match here. There he goes. Ben Toth making a great call. He needs Summers. that ball for protection. Ooh. Great catch. Hovardis comes back in. And takes Toth a lot is. of pressure off Toth. Toth is set. No, it hits Summers. Caught by Costanza. Costanza. Caught it. Off her foot, did not hit the wall. In comes McKinney. Hovardis is getting a yellow. Let's go. So now it's up to Kerry Richardson, the dead man, Psycho Toth. CPAs have all five players. Toth with the throw. Now she dropped it. Summers is out. Looks like it hit her hand before it hit the floor. But nice job protecting their dead man, Spiegel Eye Cherry. Interesting strategy by Inc. Richardson not protecting the dead man at all. Toth wants both throws here. Oh, McKinney. McKinney goes down. Oh, the old suicide yeah. walk 20. from Kerry Richardson. Done with some panache by Kerry Richardson. Looks 
little suicidal to me. 11 yeah. seconds left on the regeneration clock. Oh, Tony drives the bucket. He drops the ball. Steve drives it. Oh, man. Toad at the tone his teammate, Kerry Richardson, to jump over the line. Cannot regenerate. He deflects, and his own ball goes right out of his hands. These two teams are extremely evenly matched. I have a feeling we'll be seeing them both deep into the playoffs. Deep. And speaking of deep, Mary Strong has some probing questions for the always deep CPAs. Mary! All right, thanks, guys. Number one in the division, pretty much the best record in the league. That was an awesome game, pretty close one. That was very exciting. That's the kind of ball we like to be playing. It was a great game. Everybody was into it. We played by the number. It was awesome. You guys are headed to the playoffs for sure. Tobias, are we going to see you turn it on a bit? We're going to be sleeping really well tonight. No, no, we did so well today. All right, good luck, you guys, in the playoffs. Thank you very much. Nice good game. Inc. Incorporated battled CPAs to the end. We saw some amazing plays. We saw some yellow cards. My kind of dodgeball game. And the game ending with the ball just slipping out of Ben Tote's fingers. Stick around after the break. We've got the final regular season standings. Going to tell you who's going to be moving on and who's going home or wherever they want to go. You don't want to miss it. Who do you think was the extreme dodgeball player of the week? Dano Dave Kingman, Marie Regis Philman, or Ben Psycho Tope? Text message one, two, or three to GSN99. That's 47699. Stay tuned for results. Welcome back to Extreme Dodgeball. The regular season has come to an end. Let's look at the final standings as we go into the playoffs. In the classic division at seven and three, the CPAs are the division champs, which means they've earned themselves the all important first round bye. At six and four, armed response gets the second seed. Inc. Incorporated finished the season at 500, which is good enough to get them the third seed. So our first playoff match next week will pit armed response against Inc. Inc. And we'll have to bid a fond farewell to Barbell Mafia. Last season's runners-up finish at a disappointing 3-7 and, and are eliminated from playoff contention. Hasta la vista, Barbell Mafia. Now the final expansion division standings. Delta Force, the first ever expansion division champs, are 6-4 and four and earn the bye. Ling and the Reef Shags both finish at nickel and nickel. They'll face each other next week in the first round of the playoffs. And it's back to the lab again for the scientists of MAD, finishing with a dismal 3-7. and seven. They've also been eliminated from the playoffs. So looking ahead to next week in the playoffs, in the classic division, Arm Response will be facing off against Inc. Inc. And in the expansion division, Bling and the Reef Sharks battling it out to see who gets to move on to the semifinals. And in two weeks, the division champion, certified public assassins at Delta Force will be back to play the quarterfinal winners. We'll battle it out for a chance to play in the championship match with a shot at dodgeball glory at $25,000. And here's who you voted for as Extreme Dodgeball Player of the Week. Well, go hose yourselves off and join us next time for another exciting round of Extreme Dodgeball. I'm Bill Do or Dwyer. And I'm Zach. Yo, forget my two-way. Call me on my cell win. Thanks for watching.